This is a video that hopefully will serve as an introduction to the geometry involved in solving inclined plane problems. This is a very common class of problems that we find in physics courses, um, where an object is either sitting on or sliding down or being pushed up an inclined plane. And this is typically the situation. You have uh, some sort of wedge or an inclined plane which makes an angle theta with the horizontal and you have some object of mass m that is sitting on the plane. So, resolving components in this particular instance can be a little tricky, so we're going to talk about how to do it. So, let's imagine uh, that this particular case involves uh, just the object m under only under the influences of gravity, and it's going to slide, hopefully we all see, down the plane, right? So, if I'm going to draw a free body diagram on this, now normally I would go somewhere else to draw the free body diagram, but in this case, because we're, we're talking about how it works, I think it's instructive to draw it actually on this picture. So, I will draw it like this. Uh, I've only got gravity and the inclined plane which is touching the block. Remember, I have two things, gravity and whatever's touching it. At this level of mechanics, those are the forces we worry about. And so I'm going to draw in the gravity vector that's going to look like this. Let me make that a straight, a straighter line. Maybe. That's going to be the weight of this object. And of course, it's going to have a normal force being exerted by the plane. But here's where it can get a little tricky. Normal, remember, just means perpendicular. It means orthogonal. So normal, in this case is normal to the plane of the surface, or the surface of the plane, I should say. Um, uh, it's, it's at a right angle with this angled surface that we're, that we're sliding down the inclined plane. So the normal force will just be this, the force normal. So we, we have lost our good old gravity in one direction, normal force in the exact opposite direction that makes simpler problems much easier to solve. So the trick to this is realizing that it's actually much easier to solve this problem if you rotate your coordinate system. In other words, we, we like to, to set up a coordinate system like this, where this is our x and this is our y. But because we're the whole thing is sitting at an angle, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this coordinate system this way to where it looks like this. So here's my x and here's my y. Now what that does for me is I regain uh, the normal force going completely in the y direction. Of course, what I've lost is gravity going uh, in the negative y direction. I, but I do know how to resolve components. I know how to resolve this force of gravity into x and y components, and I can do that uh, to recover the symmetry that I had in the previous problem. So let's see how to do that. Let me get rid of this clutter. Now, let me change colors on this pen. Let's say that I'm going to resolve my w vector into something that looks like this. Change colors again. And like this. So in my new coordinate system that I've rotated, this is my um, change colors, w, y. And the other is my w, x. Uh, and it might the way I've drawn it here is how I would draw it on a free body diagram, but it's probably more instructive if I take Wx and I move it here. Remember, as long as I keep the uh, orientation and the magnitude of the vector the same, I can draw it wherever I want to. And by doing that, you see that I form a right triangle here, at which I would expect I've resolved W into perpendicular components. Uh, my new X coordinate system gives me WX. My, the, the Y in my new coordinate system gives me WY. And so, this is a good thing. The trick to recognizing um, that this is actually easier than it looks is to note that this triangle, which I have drawn in with my force vectors, W, Y, W, and W, X, and let me label W, X again, is actually similar to the triangle of the plane. It is a similar triangle, which is not just saying, oh, it's kind of the same thing. That's the mathematical similar, which means that this angle right there is actually theta, just like it is here. 
And so just by drawing in this triangle, we actually know what theta is. And so I can resolve, I can get numerical values from my resolved components as long as I know what W is. And remember, W is, uh, is just mg. So if I, as long as I know the mass of this and this ex acceleration due to gravity, I can resolve it into components. And that leads me to a free body diagram that will look like this. Here's my normal force. Here's my WY, and here is my WX, right? So you can see the WY will go to counteracting the normal force because we're in equilibrium in that direction. Along this new Y-axis, we're actually in equilibrium, right? We're going to assume this is not leaving the surface of the plane. Therefore, in that direction, we're in equilibrium, and WY is going to be equal in magnitude and opposite in direction to FN. And now my acceleration is caused by Wx. So Wx is the x component of gravity. Note, though, that this is not the full acceleration due to gravity that will, that will result out of this. Uh, in other words, uh, my part of my gravity vector goes to supporting the normal force, and part of it goes to accelerating this mass. And so I'm not going to find... Uh, that my total acceleration is 9.81 meters per second squared that I would expect if something were falling. I'm going to uh, note that it's going to be mitigated uh, through the sine of that angle, right? My Wx here will involve the sine of theta, and so the acceleration due to gravity is going to be some g cosine theta. If I run through the math, uh, which I hope you will do, you will find that. So this is why things on an inclined plane don't quote unquote fall as fast or at the same rate as something falling just in space. It's because the acceleration due to gravity uh, is lowered by the angle of the inclined plane on which it's moving.